Okay, so the 24th installment to the MCU in chronological order takes us to Spider-Man Far From Home, the epilogue to Phase 3 of the MCU. So the overall story of Far From Home is as follows. After the events of Avengers Endgame, a now resurrected Peter Parker takes a class trip to Europe with his friends. While in Europe, he is recruited by Nick Fury to team up with this mysterious being from, from another dimension named Mysterio to take on these, uh, unknown, these, these forces known as the Elementals. While this is happening, Peter Parker also has to struggle with the death of Tony Stark and his and his reluctance to take place to take his place as the new Iron Man of the world. So yeah. That is the overall story of Far From Home. Let's talk about it. As an overall movie, I like Far From Home. I think this movie is slightly better than Homecoming, though I still like it on the same level of Homecoming. I think Peter Parker as a character actually goes through a lot more depth with this movie i actually think the relationships that he has with his friends are better developed in this movie um zendaya who returns as mj i like her better i also like her better in this movie and she's more of a character in this movie i like the inclusion of jake gyllenhaal as mysterio and i like the directions they took mysterio uh peter parker having to struggle with being a kid and being a superhero and all, while also the death of tony stark also gives him some good it gives him a lot of good character moments and and a lot of good and a lot of good beats. I think John Watts, from the direct from a directing standpoint, was more comfortable doing Far From Home than he was doing Homecoming. This movie visually, this movie is a, this is a visually more interesting movie when you compare it to Homecoming. And a lot of the visual interest comes from Mysterio and how John Watts was able to create the uh, illusions that Mysterio is known for. <clears throat> And I think the action sequences are much, are much more better handled. And I think the overall third act fight between Spider-Man and, and Mysterio is actually much better than the fight with Vulture. Mainly because there's actual consequences to the fallout of the fight with Mysterio. So, in a lot of... In a lot, actually, in a lot of... In, in a lot of... In all fairness... <clears throat> I guess you could say I like Far From Home better than I do like Homecoming. Mainly because I think... I think... Uh, mainly because I think Far From Home is more refined... And you can tell that John Watts is more comfortable in the role as with Tom Holland. Like, uh, Tom Holland, to me, feels more comfortable in the role as, as Peter Parker slash Spider-Man in this movie. He's more, oh, he's more loose. He's more open. He's more, he, he, he feel, I think he found more of his voice with this, with this time playing the character. And I overall just, I overall just like the whole vibe and feel of this movie. Like, this is a fun Spider-Man movie, you know. And especially when, when you're coming off the back, when you come off the heels of Avengers Endgame which is a movie that was very heavy in terms of its emotional impact. It's good to have a nice movie like this with a more lighter tone, yet still action-packed. <clears throat> so, with all that being said, let's go over it. Uh, <clears throat> so basically, this movie starts off with uh, Maria Hill and Nick Fury, played by uh, Samuel L. Jackson and Kobe Smothers, respectively, going to Mexico to answer a distress call. This is, of course, they come into conflict with this uh, with this mysterious person known as Quentin Beck, who is fighting off this elemental uh, monster. And then we switch over to Peter Parker and his friend Ned. They're in school and they're preparing to go to this. Uh, they're, they're preparing to take a trip all across Europe. Now, while Peter and his friends go to Europe, these elementals start attacking certain landmarks in Europe, and of course, this brings along Mysterio, who has to fight these uh, elemental creatures. Which Spider-Man, which Peter Parker as Spider-Man, reluctantly, uh, no, joins the fight in, in doing so. Uh, later on in the movie, we re we find out that the opening that that since that opening prologue, Nick Fury has recruited Mysterio, and pretty much Mysterio gives this whole story about how he's from a being from a multi another dimension, and how these elementals have come to this Earth to destroy it and stuff like that. <clears throat> so now. Peter Parker and Mysterio got to team up to take down these elementals and stop them from causing worldwide destruction, in which they do. However, the plot starts to thicken. <laughs> However, the plot starts to thicken because it's revealed later on in the movie that Quentin Beck slash Mysterio is not what he appears to be. It's revealed that he's actually a former employee of Tony Stark, along with other former employees of Tony Stark, who are creating these realistic illusions in order to fill the void left by Tony Stark. And by doing so, they fabricated this entire story of these elementals. They fabricated the whole story of, of Mysterio being from another dimension when he's really not. <clears throat> and pretty much, they're a bunch of tricksters. They literally tricked Peter Parker into handing over this advanced technology known as Edith 
which pretty much gives them control over drones and, and all sorts of weaponry that was created by Tony Stark. So Peter, now having been tricked by Mysterio, has to pretty much stop him from causing mass destruction. <clears throat> And of course, this is what leads to a big to a big showdown in London, with Ms. with Peter Parker doing his best to try and stop Mysterio from killing not only destroying London but from killing his friends as well. <clears throat> so overall, I really like the overall story and tone of, of of Far From Home. I like the character of Mysterio. I think Drake Gyllenhaal did a really good job at playing Quentin Beck slash Mysterio. I like how when we first see Mysterio, he 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 literally is acting like your typical like your atypical superhero. But what I like about it is that it's an entire, it's that it's an act. He's creating this illusion that he's really a good guy when he's really just a pissed off, disgruntled former Stark employee. And I kind and I really, and I like the updated backstory of Quentin Beck in terms of the, in terms of MCU lore. Now, in the comic books, Mysterio is a former special effects artist who was fired from, was fired from his gig and that made him disgruntled. So there's really nothing to Mysterio in terms of his comic book counterpart. I think the MCU version of Mysterio is much more interesting, mainly because he's a former Stark employee, and it's actually revealed that he was the creator of the BARF technology that was seen in that was seen in Civil War. This advanced technology that Tony basically used as a as a form of therapy. I like how we were able to tie that how it, we were able to tie that angle from Civil War into this with Quentin Beck pretty much being the chief architect, and the reason why he was let go was because Tony Stark found him to be completely unstable. And now that Tony's dead, and now that Tony ha is pretty much dead, Quentin Beck now has a chance to pretty much do what Tony Stark couldn't do, and that's be the hero of the world, and that's use his and that's use his illusionary technology to pretty much trick the world into into pretty much have, promoting him to be the next hero. I like it. I think Jake Gyllenhaal gives this version of Quentin Beck a lot of charisma. He gives him a lot of uh, just. <clears throat> He also gives him a lot of menace as well. I like the bantering between between Mysterio and Spider-Man, and I like how at first Mysterio is more or less acting like an uncle mentor to Peter Parker, and once and when that big reveal happens with Mysterio just being a trickster and tricking Peter, you kind of feel the heartbreak in a sense that Peter feels because he trusted Beck, like he was like he thought that Beck was the one to fill that void left by Tony, but no, he's not. He's just some guy who is doing whatever he can to <laughs> have his evil plan go to fruition. And I like the conflict that that creates. I mean, I mean, essentially, Peter Parker has got to face a demon from Tony's past, much like, much like with Homecoming. So, I mean, yeah, you can, you can call that a gripe against this movie, but and, and also at the same time, it also sort of kind of makes a little bit of sense since Peter Parker is dealing with the death of Tony Stark, and he's and just trying to fill that void left behind by Iron Man. So him coming into conflict with Mysterio, I mean, it sort of, kind of, sort of makes sense in a way when you look at it. And I do enjoy it. And I actually think the dynamics between Mysterio and Spider-Man works much better than the dynamics of, between Vulture and Spider-Man. Mainly because, <clears throat> mainly because they both got some, mainly because they both got different motivations, yet the same motivations all at the same time. So I like that. Uh, speaking of Peter Parker and Spider-Man, I like how Tom Holland plays the character this time around. I like how Tom, I like how Peter Parker just wants to be a regular kid and just wants to be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Like he doesn't want to do these big grandiose adventures, you know, <laughs> these big grandiose adventures, mainly because there's just too much at stake. And each one, he, he wants to be a kid. He wants to be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. He wants to do these things on his time and not have it interfere with, with pretty much with his growing process. Of course, this is what brings in Nick Fury, who is not really all for that and it's pretty much and nick fury comes across more as now where tony stark more or less comes across as a loving father nick fury comes across more as that of that dickhead stepdad who just wants who is who is just who is just never gonna give show you any sympathy whatsoever and just wants you to do what you were supposed to do whether you want to do it or not <clears throat> and I actually like that dynamic between fury and parker in this movie like you know parker He's dealing with so much. Now he has like this stern, hard-ass Nick Fury who is not budging from his post. Like Fury respects Spider-Man, but at the same time, he understands that Spider-Man's a kid, which is why he's more double tough on him. And I like it. <clears throat> and I like I like it a lot. I like I like Samuel L. Jackson's performance in Far From Home. I liked how he has some he has some little moments that he gets to do here and there. I like the interactions that he has with Happy and that he has with Peter. <clears throat> like it's really fun stuff. 
So it's fun to see Samuel Jackson come back as Nick Fury. Uh, the actors who play Peter's friends, they all return from, most of them return from Homecoming. And I think this time around, they're a little bit better. Uh, Ned has a whole subplot where he has a girlfriend, where he has a girlfriend, where he's like pretty much has a girlfriend in Betty. And that's okay for what it is. It's nothing really all that, it's nothing really all, it doesn't take away from the movie, nor does it add for the movie. It's fine. Uh, the stuff with MJ is more explored in this movie, as we reveal that Peter has a crush on MJ and vice versa. So that was a nice, so, you know, <clears throat> so I like how that foundation got built upon more in this movie and it felt more natural it felt very natural and to the credit of zendaya and holland they really do have some decent on-screen chemistry with one another like i buy them as being these two high school kids who are very like ner who are very like nervous to explain how they feel about one another like i like it i, I can relate to that because i was like that when i was in high school as well like you like a girl very very much but you don't know what you want to do so you want to do these different things to see if they can get you to notice her like Peter in this movie, like he does this whole elaborate thing where he wants to like buy a necklace and then take it to Eiffel Tower and then express how he feels about her. Like it's like, you know, you get those nice little high school moments because at the end of the day, Peter is just a high school teenager who is nervous around girls. Like he's the superhero, but he's still a kid at, but at his, at his core and at his heart, he's still a kid. <clears throat> so I like all that stuff. The stuff with, Zen, with Zendai is actually not is, is actually not that bad this time around. Uh, the whole subplot of Happy Hogan having a crush on Peter's um, on Aunt May is actually pretty funny, and I actually like Happy Hogan and Peter's relationship in this movie this time around. Like you know, Happy more or less comes across to Peter as like that human mentor, like he's like almost as if Happy is taking on that role of Uncle Ben that Tony left behind, and I like it, especially when you get to the third act where Mr. where Peter takes his biggest defeat from Mysterio. And he needs Happy to, and he ha and he goes to Happy for cons for to con for consoling for help and to be consoled by, and it works. I like the chemistry with John Favreau and, and Tom Holland. John Favreau comes across more or less as that loving uncle who just wants to see his nephew do good <clears throat> by and by by and help him at any way he possibly can. You know, you got some good dramatic moments in these scenes. You got some good you got some good comedic moments in this scene, in these scenes as well. Specifically when when. Uh, when Parker is trying to uh, find out, <laughs> especially when Peter Parker is trying to prove that Happy and Aunt May are dating, so that you got some good, you got some good funny bits out of that as well. Uh, and you also got some good comedic bits throughout the whole trip to Europe, like you have Martin Starr returning as Mr. Harrington. I think he has a lot of funny moments throughout this movie. Um, I like how this what I like how this took I, I like how this film took place in different parts of Europe and wasn't confined to just one to just one location. Like we have a fight scene in Italy, we got a fight scene in Prague, we also got the entire ending takes place in London. Um Peter goes to Germany and this is where and this is where and he where he gets tricked by Mysterio in this elaborate illusion where Mysterio where Mysterio shows Peter his greatest fears, like the death of Tony Stark, the fear of losing MJ, and just trying to screw with his mind, which is great stuff. And that's actually where the visuals get very, very creative, is when Mysterio is using his illusions against Spider-Man. You got some good creative visuals, and you got some good creative visuals going on here, and I really like it a lot. <clears throat> and I also like how paranoid it makes Peter because he's now having a hard time trying to figure out what's real and what's not real because now Mysterio has gotten into his head. <clears throat> I like all that stuff. It creates that sense of paranoia. I think that, I don't think John Watts went all the way out with that paranoia. I think he could have gotten some more out of that. But for what we did get, I enjoyed it a lot. I also, I like the action sequences this time around. I like the fight scene with Mysterio and Spider-Man taking on the fire elemental in Prague. I thought that was actually really entertaining. The whole third act in London is very verbose, and to Quentin Beck, it's an Avengers, it's an Avengers level threat. But I like, but I like the creativity of this as well. Like I like how this version of Mysterio is using high tech drone technology to create his illusions, and not like, and not like uh, magical, magistical crap. Like it's very, it's more, it's more in tune to what was established within the greater MCU. And, it all, and it, again, it's a nice callback to Tony Stark and stuff like that. <clears throat> so I like how all that was handled to create these illusions. I thought it was actually really, really nicely done. And I do like the ending of pretty much Mysterio, <clears throat> of, of how Spider-Man beats Mysterio. I thought that was actually well done as well. And I also like the ground, <clears throat> excuse me, I also like the ground level stuff as well, of, of Happy Hogan trying to save the kids from being killed by the drones take him into like this chamber uh, you know while doing whatever they can to to keep themselves safe 
like I thought all that stuff was also handled fairly nicely as well as well as as well too like yeah like this movie has a nice sense of has a good sense of fun to it it doesn't take it doesn't it's not overly serious like most of the movies are <clears throat> Like it's not most not overly serious like Endgame was, but when this movie does need to get serious, it does get serious. Like when like when Peter Parker, he's struggling with the death of Tony Stark. You know, everywhere he goes, he sees Tony. You know, and he's pretty much burdening him, burdening himself with being the next Iron Man. And this is and this is actually at least one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie is when after Peter Parker gets his ass handed to him by Mysterio and he finds out that Happy's not an illusion, they have a nice conversation where Happy tells Peter like. You're never going to be the next Tony Stark. You're never going to be the next Iron Man. No one can live up to Tony. Even Tony himself couldn't live up to Tony. But the one thing Tony did have a lot of confidence in was Peter. Because he knew that Peter was somebody who was pure in heart and was always going to do the right thing. And that little speech that Happy gives Peter gives Peter the motivation to want to take the fight to Mysterio. Which is what in which the entire third act in London goes down. Which ultimately ends with the death of Mysterio by virtually Mysterio's own hand when you look at it. So yeah, I I like I like Peter's arc in this movie. It's 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 cool. It's a nice little arc. You know, he goes through like he goes, he, you know, he deals with the fallout of Tony Stark. Like he learns that he he'll, he'll never be Iron Man. He'll never be Tony, but he doesn't have to be. He doesn't need to be Iron Man. He doesn't need to be Tony. He just needs to be him. He needs to be Spider Man. He needs to be his own man and and carve out his own path. And that's what gives him, and again, that's what gives him his motivations for the third act. Which I actually, and, I, and like I said, I like the third act of this movie better than Homecoming. This third act to me is much more thrilling. It does have maybe a little too much going on, but you know what? It works for me. Like, and, and I like the create, and like I said, I like the creativity of it, of Mysterio losing, using the drones to create his illusions and stuff like that. Like, it's very clever. Like, you still maintain the essence of what Mysterio is supposed to be. <clears throat> and I have no complaints with that. Um, now, let me just talk about a couple of gripes before I get to the overall conclusion of this review. Um, now, certain now there are certain jokes in this movie that don't really that I didn't really find all that funny. Uh, the running gag of calling the spider senses the Peter Tingle was very corny and very cheesy to me. Wasn't really into that as well. Uh, the stuff with Ned and Betty, even though I was even though it didn't bother me, you didn't really need it. Didn't really add anything to the overall core of the movie. So yeah, that's 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 pretty much that was that. Uh, this <clears throat> Uh, some of the action sequences, you know, a lot of it are actually a lot of them are pretty decent, and a lot of them are just not all that creative as well. Like I said, like the, the best one is really the third act, and and when start and when Mysterio and Spider Man in his in his black costume are fighting off the fire elemental in Prague, like the stuff before that, like the like the like the fight in Italy, it was okay, like bombastic, but it was it is what it was. <clears throat> like this in this movie is not really like all the way action. It's more it has a lot more character stuff going on with with it, which I don't mind because you need it, and it works for the most and it works for the for the most part. Uh, so yeah, that's what that. Like I said, not all not every not all the humor in this movie is work works. Like some of it is just meh, and some of the side characters and some of the side plots aren't really all that interesting. Like you got this one side this one side plot with this character called Brad Davis who has a crush on MJ, and he's trying to frame Peter Parker and stuff like that. Like that that whole triangle. I didn't really need it. It was really unnecessary. And if you took if, if you took that out, it would have made the development of MJ and Peter a little bit more fluid, in my opinion. But by having that Brad Davis character, it kind of just hampers it a little bit, and it doesn't really go anywhere anyway, because the whole idea is that Brad Davis is trying to is trying to like put to is trying to convince everyone that there's something going on with Peter, <clears throat> but it but it doesn't really like I said, it doesn't really go anywhere. <laughs> so that's so that's what that. So yeah, like you got those nitpicks I wasn't really too fond of, but now we get to the what really matters with this movie, which is the mid credit scene and the post credit scene. So basically, the mid credit scene. <clears throat> so once everything goes down, MJ and Peter are now together. They're swinging through New York and they make a quick stop. Now, when they make this stop, there is a news report playing on Madison Square Garden, and it's with this report where we find out that Mysterio has created his final and greatest illusion. And that is the illusion, and that is the illusion of Spider-Man being the one who killed Mysterio. But while this is happening, he also reveals that Spider-Man is Peter Parker. <clears throat> and this is revealed to us by J. Jonah Jameson himself. J.K. Simmons reprises his role 
in a non in a in an MC now he reprises J. Jonah Jameson, but the MCU version of J. Jonah of J. Jonah J. Jameson as an Alex Ross type of conspiracy theorist, and it works for me. Because if you actually pay attention to J.J. Jameson, he is a conspiracy theorist, because he always thinks that Spider-Man is doing these evil things when he's really not. He pretty much creates he pretty much creates the conspiracy and sensationalism of Spider-Man being the villain when Spider-Man is not a villain. And this newer version of J. Jonah Jameson is no different <coughs> than the comic books version of J. Jonah Jameson. It's just more updated. Instead of being an editor for a newspaper, he is a conspiracy theorist in the same vein as Alex of Alex of uh, of uh, Alex Jones. <clears throat> so, and I like it. It's a nice wrinkle. It's a nice wrinkle to the Jim to the Jameson character, and it also sets up well, what's to go down in No Way Home. Now that the whole world knows that Peter Parker is Spider Man, so I like that. And of course, you also get the the post credit scene where it's revealed that Tolos and his wife, the scrolls from Captain Marvel were posing as Nick Fury and Maria Hill the entire time. And when you actually watch this movie, you can actually see it because there are certain moments, because there are certain asp there are certain moments where Nick Fury doesn't act like Nick Fury, and you can tell that he's trying too hard to be intimidating. Uh, there's some, there's like, there's little things where Mysterio is telling his story and Nick Fury gives, and Maria Hill share a, share a confused look. Now, if this was the real Nick Fury, he can read right into, he can, re he'll, re he'll be reading that bullshit nine days from Sunday. But uh, but this version of Nick Fury was easily tricked into thinking that whatever Mysterio was saying was correct when it, in fact it wasn't. Of course, it's revealed that Nick that the real Nick Fury is on a mission in space doing some stuff. So I like all that. <clears throat> okay, so with all that being said, I'm going to give Spider-Man: Far From Home a solid. I'm going to give this movie a solid eight out of ten. It's very entertaining. It's very enjoyable. I like it on the same level as Homecoming, though slightly better. I think Mysterio as a villain as a villain is much better than the Vulture, though I do like the Vulture. I like the action sequences in this movie. I think the visuals are much better than how they were in Homecoming. Peter Parker goes to a nice character arc in this movie that sets him up for No Way Home and, and, and the concluding and the concluding arc that he goes through. But you also have some nice little character bits here and there, like with Happy and with his Aunt May. I, I, I overall really like the idea of Maria Hill and Nick Fury, of Talos and his wife, undercover as Nick Fury and Maria Hill. Mainly because when you watch the movie with that context, he's Tolos is trying so hard to be intimidating. And now when you watch, you get, you get that little chuckle here and there. And it also plays into the whole and also plays into the whole illusion aspect. And I also I like the fact that Tolos was very, very disheartened by the fact that he could that he that he fell from Mysterio's illusion when he himself is a shapeshifter and overall illusionist. <clears throat> so I like that little I like that little aspect. So yeah, Far From Home to me is a very, very fun movie. It tells a nice self-contained story, acts as a decent epilogue to Endgame. It gives P it gives Peter a nice character arc while also setting him up for his greatest battle, which is going to be in No Way Home. So yeah, 8 out of 10 for Spider-Man for Spider-Man Far From Home. Let me know your thoughts in the comment sections down below. Like the video and subscribe, and I'll check you back next time for more.